Hello, this is Brother Denny. Welcome to Charity Ministries. Our desire is that your life would be blessed and changed by this message. This message is not copyrighted and is not to be bought or sold. You are welcome to make copies for your friends and neighbors. If you would like additional messages, please go to our website for a complete listing at www.charityministries.org. If you would like a catalog of other sermons, please call 1-800-227-7902 or write to Charity Ministries, 400 West Main Street, Suite 1, Ephra, PA, 17522. These messages are offered to all without charge by the free will offerings of God's people. A special thank you to all who support this ministry. Praise the Lord this morning. I believe you mean it. I'm going to test you though. It sounded like you mean it. But we're going to test you this morning. And see if you mean it. Young people, there is nothing more exciting this side of heaven than this beautiful relationship with this Creator that you've been singing about. There is nothing more exciting than entering into His service, Lord, in these our youthful days. Nothing more exciting. I hope you will all get involved and get thoroughly addicted so that you can't stand to live without being busy in the service of the King. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we bow down to Thee again, O Lord, Thou art God, and beside Thee there is no God. And Lord, some way, for some reason, we know that Thou art God. For some reason we know that. Out of all the millions and millions of people on the earth, we know this, Lord. Thank you. Lord, this morning, this last session now, God, again, we are looking and seeking and longing after the next generation of children, God. We enter in, Lord, with your heart which we do know because we have read in your word that you are also seeking and longing and looking to the next generation of children. I pray that you will do that through this message today, God. Use thy servant, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, young people, this is the last session of these five sessions on dreams and visions of a godly home. And I want to continue in the direction that I was yesterday. And so we'll just call this, this session, How Do I Prepare Part Two? Part Two. Again, we're looking at practical areas. And I hope you know that we need to look at practical areas. It's not enough to just get your minds floating around about beautiful things that you've heard. But we much, much must seek by God's grace to inspire you to engage your will to pursue these things in very practical ways. Remember that a vision without action 
is a daydream. An action without vision is a nightmare. But vision with action brings beautiful reality in any area of the Christian life that you pursue. A vision with action will bring beautiful reality. So we want to continue today to stimulate and challenge you to action as you go home from this place. And my prayer is that your moms and dads will wonder what happened to you when you get home. I mean, I'm even praying that they might think you're a bit fanatical by the time you get home. I so appreciated, brother, what Brother Darrell said yesterday in his class on the gospel. The gospel is not a plan. It's not seven steps to follow. It's not a ticket to heaven or an escape route out of hell. The gospel is a person, the Lord. Jesus Christ, oh, that thrilled my soul to hear him say that. The gospel is a person, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he it is that makes the gospel the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. It is him. Who makes it the power of God? This is where the victorious overcoming life is. It is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. May I say that the Christian life also is the same person. The same person. Paul met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, didn't he? And he was never the same. The Lord Jesus captivated his heart's attention on that road and kept it captivated for all of his days. It's amazing to see how that captivation drug that man all over the known world, put him through all kinds of sufferings, and made him, in fact, an absolute fanatic who was in love with Jesus and nothing else mattered to Paul all his days. The gospel is a person. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now there are many beautiful precepts to follow in this book we call the Bible. But yet even they, all of them, flow out of Him. Make sure you always remember that, young people. Don't put the cart before the horse. Keep that thing in its proper perspective. Every beautiful principle in this book will flow out of the Lord Jesus Christ and you can have every one of them you want if you will stay in Him. So our greatest burden, and I mean our, I mean all of those that are responsible for this Bible school, our greatest burden is to see you, all of you, established in Christ. A sound and a clear conversion, a beautiful cleansing and clearing of your hearts, a heaven that is open over your life, and to send you home walking completely surrendered to God. That was our goal long before you got here. Long before you got here, that was our goal. Somehow, that God, in His grace and wisdom, would help us all as 
as we seek Him and pray that this will happen to you young people while you are here. Frankly, if I may put the whole, all the sessions that I've been giving to you, if I may put them all in a simple statement concerning the preparation for a godly home, let me put it this way. If you will, if you will, young people, having gained a clear conscience and an open heaven this week, if you will set your heart to walk day by day with God for the next two or three years, you will find yourself standing at a place where you are prepared to enter in and set up a godly home. Can I take everything I've said and put it in that little statement? But it's true. If you will get that and go home with a resolve, I'm going to walk with this God that I have met this week. And I'm not going to turn back. You do that for two or three years. And I mean in sincerity. I'm not talking about dropping in and visiting Him once a week on Sunday. I'm talking about walking with Him. You will find yourself at that place that you want to be. Prepared, ready, and able to enter in to one of the most important seasons of your life. But may I also say that if you will not walk in consecrated obedience with this God and you go home to go your own Christian way, in parentheses or quotes, your own Christian way, not, these sessions will be nothing more than some good things to think about for a few days. You will lose sight of everything I have told you. So let's look at a few more little schools that we want you young people to get into. And I've been speaking a bit about the first one, but I want to make it a point, And that is, you must learn to know God and walk with Him. You must learn to know God and walk with Him, young people. This is the purpose of the gospel. This is the purpose of the gospel. To learn, to make a way for you to get thoroughly right with this God who is the only true God and then for you to walk with Him. This is the purpose of the gospel. To free you and clear you of sin and bring you into fellowship with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is a beautiful classroom which reaches over into all the other ones that I've already spoken about, and you will never walk through the other ones if you are not willing to walk in this one. In fact, if you won't enter into this one, you can just skip the other ones. Just skip them. You will give up in discouragement in a few days with every one of them that I gave you yesterday, if you're not going to walk in this one. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Young people, God is a spirit. And you must walk with this God who is a spirit. You must know Him. You must know His presence. You must learn to discern His voice. He is a spirit. You must learn to discern Him speaking to you by His Spirit through His Word. You must learn the principles of the abiding life. John chapter 15. You must learn the principles of of the abiding life. You must learn what Paul meant when he said to the Romans in Romans chapter 8, walk after the Spirit. Walk after the Spirit. 
you must learn what Paul meant when he said to the Galatians, Walk in the Spirit, and you, glorious proclamation, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Isn't that a nice news to know? You will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. God is bringing many of you into vital connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said already, that was our goal. And every time we see another face light up with the glory of God inside of them, our hearts leap for joy. And we keep meeting together the teachers and those that are overseeing and even some of the prayer group leaders. We keep meeting together and saying, here's another one that's shining. Praise God! Because that's what we're after. We want to see you young people come into a vital connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is bringing many of you into that place. This is absolutely the only way that you will ever have a godly home. Absolutely. I want to recommend two assignments to you on this point. We're staying on the practical level. Because I can't stay here as long as I would like to. But I want to encourage you, first of all, You go home and you find Andrew Murray's book called Abide in Christ. You go home and you get that book. I challenge you. That is a life-changing book. We have recommended it to many young people through the years. I've never seen one young person come back and say, I didn't get anything out of it. They all say, that book, ma. I will never be the same. Now I understand what it means to abide in the vine. So that's one of your assignments. Andrew Murray's book, Abide in Christ. It's a life changer. And if you want to study some more on this subject, you get the tape set from Bible school a couple years ago called The Spiritual Man. There we took the whole week and laid out what we're speaking about right here. You get that. Go home and study. Get on your knees and talk to God and say, God, I want to get to know you. I'm not going to go back to the way that I was. I promise you, without this, You cannot have a godly home. You cannot. You're going to have to have some quiet time in order to do what I'm talking to you about today. Our second point is to learn the Word. But I want to say something about quiet time first. Quiet time. The best time to find quiet time is when? Morning? That's right. There's not much quiet time in the evening. There's a lot going on in the evening in everybody's home. But there is a time in the morning when it's quiet. You need quiet time. You need it desperately. And I want to encourage you to go home and change your schedule and get up early in the morning and seek the face of God. Say, well, Brother Denny, I'm, I'm not much for getting up early in the morning. I'm a night person. Okay, but what are you doing in your night person? What are you doing with all those hours? My conviction is, if you'll set yourself to get up early in the morning for about three days in a row, all of a sudden you will feel strangely led You already know the answer, don't you? You will feel strangely led to go to bed. 
Do you know why you will feel strangely led to go to bed? Because about 8.30 or 9 o'clock you'll start going, Oh! And it's because you got up early in the morning. That's okay. That's the same thing that everybody else does at midnight when they crawl into bed. You're just doing it at nine. And then you get over there and you get a hold of that alarm and you set that thing there at a good early time and you get up early in the morning. I tell you, it'll change your life. Learn the Word, young people. Learn the Word. Paul said to Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God. This point flows right along with the one before. But your heart must be engaged in the task. Your heart must be saying, I want to learn the Bible. I want to learn the Bible. And there's a tape that you can get called How to Study the Bible. If you don't know what to do, if your mind draws a blank when you think about this, if for you, learning the Bible means you get up and maybe you're just going to read so many chapters and you're done and out of the way. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about getting into the Word and getting the Word into you. How to study the Bible. Your heart must be saying, I want to bury God's Word in my heart. And I'd like us to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The, these verses should be guiding principles in your young lives. These verses should be guiding you in the decisions that you make. Because... These will be your responsibility when you enter in to marriage and have a home of your own. These verses will be your responsibility. Let them be guiding verses in your young life. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all His statutes and His commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son. Did you get that? All the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, young people, shall be in thine heart. And I want you to notice here, it doesn't say they'll be in your mind. It says they will be in your heart. Like John said to the young men there in First John, I write unto you, young men, because the Word of God abideth in you. You study what that means. That word abideth is a deep word. I write unto you, young men, because the Word of God abideth in you. These words shall be in thy heart, young people. Not just in your mind. In your heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now, young people, you answer, you answer it in your own hearts. There's only one way you're going to be able to do this kind of a teaching program which God is calling you to do, and that is if the Word of God abideth in you. It's got to be more than just up here in your head. It must be in your heart where it will flow out instant in season and out of season all through the days of your life. That's the goal. Think of it.
Think about it, young men. I don't know if you did, but I'm going to shock you this morning. But if you're going to follow these kind of teachings, if you are going to enter in to endeavoring to have a godly home, you have 12,000 family devotions ahead of you, young man. 12,000 of them. And that's giving you Sunday off and a miss every now and then. 12,000 family devotions. Now get busy. And Brother Rick said, you need to remind them they only have to give them one at a time. (laughs) And I want to tell you that you only have to give them one at a time, but you've got 12,000 of them to do, brethren. That's 40 years of family devotions. That's about how many years I'll have in by the time David walks out of the house around 20 years old. And these words shall be in thine heart. This is one of the greatest challenges of family life right here. And most parents fail at it. Most fail at it. One of the greatest helps to me in fulfilling these verses right here in my home is the storehouse of knowledge of the Word of God that I have stored up in my heart. When I got converted, I got converted. My heart was burning to learn this book. I spent two or three hours a day in this book when I got converted. There were some days I read 50 chapters in the Bible. I read that many chapters. My heart burned like I never knew it could. Have you ever read 50 chapters in the Bible? I don't mean I've got to get 50 chapters done here. Read them real. I'm talking about sitting down with an exercise of your heart and reading 50 chapters in the Bible, you will say like those two men on the road to Emmaus, did not my heart burn within me? Then I went off to Bible school, and in Bible school, the first two years of Bible school, we read through the Bible eight times a year for those two years. And I worked at UPS, loading trucks on the dock. That's what I did from 10.30 at night until 4.30 in the morning. But I put the Bible on three by five cards and stuck them up on the wall of the inside of that truck. They had all this garbage rock music playing, blasting over all the speakers, and I just blocked it out by memorizing the Word of God. So I have this storehouse in me. And young men sometimes... I'll sit down and prepare something for my family. But there are other times when you know how life really is. And I don't have time to do that. But I've been amazed how many times in those times we will just sit down and open up the Bible and start to read a few verses. And just like that, something beautiful unfolds for the family you know where that comes from? That comes out of the storehouse. I've been packing up honey for a few years. And young men and young ladies, you need to pack up some honey. There's a big job ahead of you. And if you want to sanctify your children, you'll need to do it with this book. I don't want to blow you away this morning, but I do want to engage your hearts to go home with purpose and study God's Word. And don't miss, some of you young people miss 
days and days. You can't do that for years. You can't do it. You dare not. This is how you can be instant in season and out of season. And I believe that's what these verses are talking about here in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's talking about a father and a mother who are instant in the Word. In season and out of season. In season when you're sitting in family devotions and out of season when you're walking by the way. Amen? I mean, the whole world is a big classroom if you're full of the Word of God. And you have your little fella or your little girl next to you. The whole world is a classroom. And that's what God is saying here. And does not the Scripture say in Psalm chapter 1 as a promise to those who delight in the Word of God and meditate in it day and night. How do you meditate in the Word of God day and night? How do you do that? Maybe you think, how do you do that? Dear young people, that is not a mental thing. That is a heart thing. If you put it in your heart, it will come up all day long. And what does God say? And whatsoever you do shall prosper. I believe those verses. Do you? You could ride on that promise right there, right into a beautiful godly home. Just on that one promise right there. I'm going to set my heart to delight in God's Word and meditate in it day and night and trust God for a godly home. You could ride on that one promise right down the road into a godly home. And I, so I plead with you, especially you young men, give God's Word one hour of your day every day. One hour. One open-hearted hour, reading, meditating, praying the Word, studying, perusing, searching, examining. You give God's Word one hour of your day, every day. You have in your hands... The one thing that will change your life and establish your home and sanctify your children, you have it in your hands. I hope there's no dust on your Bible at home. The children at our house, they have fallen asleep listening to the Bible on cassette, all of them, from the time they were two until the time that they were about ten. They have fallen asleep at nap time and night time. Just, you know, just off to sleep with the Word of God just in them. They've gone off to sleep that way. This is one powerful book, young people. Number three today. And this one flows from number one and two. I want to send you home with a resolve. To master your time and your priorities. To master your time and your priorities. To become the master over your time. Let's read in Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. If... If ye then 
be risen with Christ, are ye? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth, God's Word says. Why, Paul? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with Him in glory. So since this is all going to take place, set your affections on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Set the priorities of your life on the things above, not on the priorities of the things on the earth. Do that. Master your time, young people. Isaiah 55. Let's turn there. Isaiah 55, verse 1, 2, and 3. Now these scriptures are often used as a salvation appeal. And surely it is that. But may I just encourage you to read these scriptures as an appeal to you as a child of God to come and feast on the Lord and His Word. To come and feast on the Lord and His Word. And so we will read it in light of that. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, Come ye to the waters. Are you thirsty? Then come to the water. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy. Buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. You don't need any money to buy this. And by the way, it's priceless. It's priceless. And then God says in verse 2, and He says it to our hearts today, Wherefore? Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? It is not the bread of life. Why are you spending your money or your time on that which is not bread, God says? Right? Because money is time. And time is money. Why are you spending your time on that which is not bread, God says? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Oh, what a picture of America. What a picture of American Christianity. Spending their labors on that which brings no satisfaction at all. And God says, Hearken diligently unto me, says God, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear. Come unto me, says God. Come unto me. And hear, and your soul shall live and live, and live, and live, and live, and live, and live. Come unto me, and hear, and let your soul delight in fatness. Come unto me, and hear, and your soul shall live, and live, and live, and live, and live. Did you get it? You don't need any money for this. You have to buy it. You know what you buy it with? You buy it with your time. You buy it with your time. Any of you have any more of that than me? How many, day, how many hours does God give you in a day? 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24. You can buy this commodity with your time. Master your time and your priorities. 
First things first, young people. First things first. And don't compromise. Your parents would probably say the greatest challenge of their life is keeping their priorities straight. They would probably say it is their biggest failure. So many things going on. Oh my, I just don't get to the most important ones. There's so many things going on. I'm just too busy. And so, we don't have family devotions. I'm just so busy. And so, we don't spend any time building relationships. I've just got so much going on. And you know, we parents, we say those things as if, oh, poor me, and we have no idea that we were, we're speaking our own condemnation out of our mouth. We don't realize that really what we're saying is, I just don't really care about the most important things. And my billfold is more important and my business is more important and the things that I want to do are more important. Our priorities get off. It's a plague in America. And the quiet time suffers, and the family times they suffer, and the family altar that suffers, and relationship building time that suffers. But I want to challenge you young people to master your time and your priorities in your youth. It will never be easier than now. And you say, Brother Denny, I don't have time. You blew me away this morning. I have no idea how I'm going to do what you're saying. Listen, it won't get easier. I guarantee you it will not get easier than it is now. Your life will get many folds in it as the years go by. But if somehow you can master the priorities of your life now, you can carry that beautiful treasure into your home someday. So I want to challenge you to make a practical list of priorities. You get down on your knees before God. And you and the Lord make a list. First things first. You know, you know how to make that list, but you do it on your knees. Get on your knees. Bow your heart before God and say in sincerity, Dear God, I want to master the priorities of my life, Lord. I'm going to write them down in order. Please guide me by your Spirit to know what the most important things are. And then you just start writing them. I guarantee you, I guarantee it, the video games and the computer games and the computer time and two hours at the mall and hanging out with my friends and driving around in the evening and the two hours that you spend polishing your car, all those things will be down on the bottom. Amen? Amen? Amen. They'll be down on the bottom of the list. And you know what happens to the bottom of the list? It doesn't get done. Wouldn't that be sad, brethren, that your shiny car would just have dirt on it? Wouldn't that be a shame? Thanks, Brother Mose. <laughs> Who cares about that car? Let it rust away. It's going to rust anyway. Brother Denny, that's not good stewardship. Hey, this is good stewardship. I mean, come on, let's get serious about stewardship. This is good stewardship. Let that old pile of rust rust away. Master the priorities of your life, young people. Put them down. Just put them down. One after the other. Just one after another. If you will master them in your youth, you will carry a treasure with you into your home life. And your children and your husbands 
and your wife will be blessed because you did. And not very many do, young people. You say, Brother Denny, I don't have time to do what you're saying. What are you saying? Think about what you are saying. I don't have time to seek God's face. I don't have time to read His Word. I don't have time to prepare my life for the most important stage of my life on this earth. I don't have time, Brother Denny. So I'm just going to go haphazardly into it because I had other things that I wanted to do and they were more important. And and I just had to do that. That was so much fun, putting on those buttons and watching those things run around on the screen that I walked into the most important part of my life with my eyes closed. How could it be? I don't have time. The current of American society is carrying us along with it and we don't know it, young people. And may I say it, your mom and dad don't know it, but could you wake up, please? It's very interesting and it is a blessing to me, I... I've been studying the life of Samuel Chadwick, and you probably don't know who that is, but you will. I've been studying his life for the remnant, for an article in the remnant. And he was a mighty force for God, this Samuel Chadwick. But when he was 15 years old, he began to hear that voice that Brother Darrell was talking to us about when he was 15. And that voice, in the quiet of his closet, when he was alone with God, said, I want you to preach the gospel, Samuel. I want you to preach the gospel. And he thought, I don't even have an education. He went off to work when he was eight years old. He didn't get an education. God, you want me to be a preacher? I don't even have an education. I want you to be a preacher, Samuel. At 15, I mean, he went to work with his dad from 6 in the morning. He got home at 6 in the evening. He had his supper and visited with the family till 7. And he studied from 7 until midnight. From the age of 15 to the age of 21. Because he heard that voice of God saying, there's something that I want you to do, Samuel. You need to get prepared. All of his friends were kicking that dumb soccer ball around while he was alone in his room. Bouncing it off their head, you know. What utter foolishness. What utter foolishness. If you get on your knees and look at your priorities, you and the Lord together, what utter foolishness. Oh, but Lord, don't you know I need to learn how to make this ball go this way or that way. You know, when it hits my head, don't you know, Lord, I need to learn how to do that. I need to learn how to kick it from the side and make it go over here. Don't you know, Lord, what utter foolishness. Amen. Amen, Brother Denny. Do you know, young people, that 150 years ago, all the young people grew up by the age of 15? Do you know that? Now we wait till we're 23. You know why? It's the play mentality that has taken over the United States youth. And now you have to play for a few years before you grow up. But they grew up at 15, 150 years ago. And like I said, I hope to send you home 
And your parents will wonder what Brother Denny did to you. <laughs> Good night, Mom. Where are you going? I'm going to bed. Son, it's only 8.30. When you get up in the morning, Mom, 4.30 in the morning, beep, 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 beep. The whole house hears it. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, what glorious sounds at 4.30 in the morning. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Eternity, young people. Eternity. What will really count in eternity? Don't let the American society and culture rule you. Don't you know that society is the world? Don't let that thing rule you. And I say that to all us moms and dads in this room too. There's so many things to do. We just have all our evenings filled up. And get to bed so late. And slip out of bed in the morning. No quiet time with the God of heaven. And off we go through our day. Hey, that's spiritual suicide. Russian roulette, you know. I wonder when the bullet will go off. What a precious discipline to bring into your married home. The last two we're going to just skim. Number four. Number four, young people, is to get into the service of the king. Get into the service of the king. First John chapter 4, verse 7 through 21 is an awesome portion of the Bible. And the principle that is taught in that portion of the scripture is this in a nutshell. If we sacrifice our lives for others, God dwells in us and His love is perfected and matured in us. His love. I can't think of a more precious commodity to bring into my home than that. His love is perfected in us as we sacrifice our lives for others. Nothing will mature you faster than this. Young people, to get involved in the service of the King. This exercise will open a fountain of ever-flowing grace in your life. And if you want to study that one deeper, here's two tapes for you. The doctrine of God's work. The doctrine. It's a doctrine, young people, of God's work. And number two, others. Others. You find that. Others. And point number five. Wow, how did I get through that so quick? I want to say something, the last point here today to young people about courtship. And maybe some of you thought we would spend a lot of time on courtship. Well... I started at the beginning of the week right where you started at the beginning of the week. And God didn't lead that way, but I sat and listened to those tapes on courtship in preparation for this, this session. And I haven't listened to them for six years since I preached them, but I sat and I listened to them. Man, some good stuff in there. Powerful, protecting principles in those tapes. The purity that precedes your courtship. The parental involvement in courtship. The fasting and prayer before courtship. The spiritual nature of courtship. The discerning process of courtship. The holding of emotions until everything is clear. And many, many more principles that are brought out in those tapes on courtship. They are powerful, protective principles, young people. You don't want to miss that point. I'm telling you, it's a very foolish thing 
to flippantly fall in love with somebody. And because your heart is fluttering, you discern it to be God's will. It's a very foolish thing to do that. Not having done your homework ahead of time. That's a very foolish thing, young people. I've seen many in the last six years do it the wrong way. They have paid. They have paid. And as powerful as the emotions are, I have been shocked that I was not able to talk them out of their foolish mistake. But I love her, Brother Denny. And they enter into something that they started paying for six months after they got married. Why? Because they just let their heart flutter over this way and, and the emotions started coming together. No discernment, no checking with mom and dad, no prayer and fasting, no carefulness, no sobriety. She was just really beautiful and we just clicked from the very first moment we met. And off we went into life together. Don't do it, young people. Don't do it. You can throw the whole thing away on this point. You can throw it away. Don't just go out and fall in love. Don't do that. Make sure it's the right one. Make sure it's clear with God. Make sure it's clear with your parents. Make sure they have convictions like you do. Make sure of these things. And then let your heart go. It is a natural function to fall in love. Anybody can do that. It is a spiritual function to discern and choose a life partner before God. I just want to encourage you with that one. And I don't say all this to fear you, but to sober you. Just to sober you. Just to slow you down. Just to get you thinking. Those principles of courtship, they're powerful. They are protective principles. And it's six years later and I've seen many couples now who walk down that road with a carefulness of heart. And they have beautiful, happy marriages. And that's what I want for you. And I think that's what you want also. I want to encourage you. Don't pass over the principles of courtship and say, Ah, that's just pants. That's a bunch of bunk. You don't need to do that. You know, some do that. Ah, hands off. That's ancient. That's archaic. Nothing wrong with a little hugging. Nothing wrong with a little kissing. What does that guy know? Yeah, you go ahead. You go down that road. The others have gone down that road. It doesn't come out right. It doesn't, young people. I'm sure there are many other practical things that I could challenge you with. But I just want to leave you with these words. As we finish these two sessions on how do I prepare to have a godly home. Because you're all in the preparation stages of your life. Vision without action is just a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. But if you will take the vision that God has put in your heart this week and unite it with the action of these practical things that I've challenged you with, you will see beautiful reality in your life in the years to come. Shall we stand for prayer? Our Father and our God, we quiet our hearts before you this one more time here, Lord, as we...
ponder these dear young people, their homes, their children, God. O oh Lord, I pray that you will hover over the seeds that are being planted in the hearts through these sessions, God. Hover over those seeds, Lord. And I pray, let them take root downward and bear beautiful fruit upward, the fruit of godly young men, totally dedicated to God, joining together with godly young ladies who have a single eye upon God, and beautiful fruit of godly little children rising up being sanctified by the Spirit of their parents and the Word of God. Lord, I know that's what you want. And so we are asking something that is your will. And we know that we have the petition that we desire of thee, Lord. Oh, bring it to pass. We commit them all to thee, Lord. And we pray.